Alright, welcome to the 15th episode of the Java Game Development with Liptidx series. And right now we have this. This nice little ball here falling down into infinity. So, that's not really what we wanted. Um, in this episode I want to get uh, the possibility to press escape so we can get back to the level menu and then go back into this screen here so we don't have to start up the whole game again every time we make changes, which is taking a lot of time, and some ground, so the ball doesn't fall into infinity anymore. Um, okay, so let's actually start with the escape button. Not a button, but escape key. And usually I'd just say, let's set the input processor to a new input processor. But if we do that, you see that we have to override all these methods here because the input processor is not a class, it's an interface. And if we make an interface, if we instantiate one, we have to give it all these methods here um, that the interface has. So this is a little bit overkill for this just one purpose to go back with escape. So let's actually create something in here or wherever, it doesn't really matter, and call it input, um, I don't know, yeah, controller or something, so we don't get confused um, with other things, and implement the input processor in there, and yeah, now we have the input processor in a class, um, so we can choose with which methods we want to override new input controller and like this and then we just want to override key down we want to return true because returning true tells um, the input processor things here to not give this event to anybody else but it does not really matter because that's the only input processor set um, in this case but anyway um, if the key code equals keys dot escape we want to go back into the level menu Alright, so this should be nothing new for you. If you watched my previous tutorials, this should be pretty normal. So let's see if it ex is actually working. It totally is. Cool. So now let's actually get to the interesting part and add the, yeah, the ground. So at first, um, this is the ball. And this is the ground. We have to create a body definition again because actually we can use the old body definition if you just rename it to body definition. Um, but now we want to change and fix that typo up there. Uh, now we want to change the body type. to a static body because the ground is not going to move body type dot static body and we don't want the position to be at um, one meter up so let's set that to zero zero we are done with the body definition for this and we can create the shape Actually, let's create the fixture first. We already have the fixture there from here. It, it's still existing down there. But we want to change a few things. And at first we want to change the... Well, we don't care about the density at all because it's a static body and that just doesn't matter. Um, but we want to change the friction to, let's say, about 5. 
because this is ground and it has some high friction. And to, um, the restitution to actually zero. Yeah. Then we want to make the shape that we're going to add to this fixture. Um, ground shape. And this is not a circle shape, obviously, because the ground is not a circle. So I'll introduce a new shape type to you. Um, and this is going to be the chain shape. As the name says, oh, I think we'll have to call that ground shape. Ground shape equals new chain shape. So as the name says, the chain shape is pretty much just a line and it's chained between its vertices so we can give it a bunch of vertices and then it's yeah going from one vertice to the next vertice to another vertice so it's pretty much a polyline so let's see what we all got and we can create a chain and give it a vector2 array. So let's create a vector2 array actually. And the first one is going to be at let's say minus there is now the x, x coordinate um, minus I don't know 500 it doesn't really matter for us and at zero height um, and then we create another vertice which is at 500 zero so now this ground is uh, pretty long it's a ch it's a chain between these two vector twos and the vector two in this case is just seen as a point in, p in space and this point is at minus 500 zero and this point is at 500 zero so if we connect these two points we get a line that goes from minus 500 zero to 500 zero. Uh, so in the end, it's just yeah, a ground being thousand meters long. The ball is not going to fall off that one. <laughs> That's actually all we have to do with the ground shape, isn't it? Yep. We want to dispose it, but later. Um, we of course have to change the shape of the fixture definition. and then we can actually go ahead and create it create body with the same body definition again and then create the fixture with the same fixture definition again this is the exact same line as here but we changed the necessary things in the fixture def and in the body def so yeah we don't have to give the garbage collector two things to take care of. Um, I think we could already run this actually. And I forgot that we don't have to do it like this because we just changed this. And there it is. There is the ground. Pretty simple, huh? So to this latest to, to to show this to you guys um, a little bit, yeah, I don't know, to explain a little bit more. Um, the green one here is green because it's a static body and the box to the debug render renders static things green. Um, and yeah, as you can see it's a ground which is going from a minus 500 somewhere in that direction and yeah, pretty far away and uh, to 500 on the x-axis in that direction pretty far away. So yeah, there we go. Let's actually zoom in a little bit more because this ball is actually one meter big. That's already a pretty big ball, but it's just really small on the screen here. Set radi radius to half meter. So since it's the radius, we have to take a times two to get um, the actual size of the ball. So it's one meter. And let's just say 25 right here. And go back in again. And there we are. This looks nicer I think um, yeah I don't know 500 is really overkill maybe we want to see the end sometimes so let's just say 50 and 
yeah, there's one more thing that we'll notice. If we actually resize this, it's deforming everything inside here. So that's the same problem that we had with the stages before. Um, however, there is a really simple solution again. And yeah, um, the rendering until now is just done by the debug renderer and it's using the camera combined matrix to yeah to to, L to to transform everything correctly and just make it make it look um the correct way so what we have to change is the camera because everything we draw is based off the camera's combined matrix so let's uh, go in the resize method and say camera dot we well we have a bunch of options here we can set um yeah say set to ortho but then we have to um, give it a boolean y down, which is if we have um, y axis to yeah to the bottom <laughs> coordinate system, which we don't have. So let's just say viewport width equals width divided by 25. Uh, divided by 25 because we're doing it down here as well. And camera dot viewport height equals height divided by 25 and actually because we are doing it there we don't have to do it here because if you remember the life cycle of the application listener it's first calling show and then it's calling resize so we can size everything the correct way in the beginning um, but we definitely have to call camera dot update because if we change the viewport width and viewport height some things change but the camera combined matrix is still the same so we have to call camera dot update which recalculates the projection and view matrix of this camera a uh, camera and the combined matrix is the combined ma uh, projection and view matrix which are recalculated then so, like this, we, yeah, recalculate all the camera stuff. And now it should look the same, all ways we scale it. Fine, it does. How long is this already? Oh god, okay, this is gonna be a shorter episode. Just make sure you understand the box to do things again. Um, yeah. Let's call these this one here uh, the ball shape, just that we know what we are talking about. And at first we are making the body definition from the previous episode, or the pre, yeah, I don't know which episode. And then we are creating the shape for this ball. We are adding it to the fixture def, which holds all the physical information. And then we say the um, the world should create a new body based off the body definition and on that body which this create body method returns it should create a fixture and then um, yeah use the fixture definition to create this fixture um, so create fixture just to recall this means that we add this shape this shape actually this shape here that we put in the fixture def with these um, physical options to this body. Uh, we could also do crazy stuff like ball shape dot set position actually then we have to give it a vector 2 again and let's say this ball shape is positioned at 5 meters to the right and the same height. So let's see what's going to happen then. Did you see that? The ball is now 5 meters more to the right. But the body actually is still here. It's just the ball shape that's over there. So like this we could actually... Yeah, let's try this out. Mm. No, let's not. We'll do that later. <laughs> uh, we don't want to mess things up, so we'll just let that how it is. And then down here we use the same body definition as above, but we change its body type to a static body, and we change the 
position to zero zero again because if the ground is at zero zero that makes sense and the ball is at zero one to not be in the ground. Um, then we create a chain shape which is a polyline pretty much uh, that yeah goes from vertice to vertice. So here we create a chain with this vector two array using these vertices here from minus fifty to fifty makes a one hundred wide line. Um, then we use the same fixture dev as above but set the shape to the ground shape the friction to something different and the restitution as uh, well and then we use the same line as above to just create this object in the world again and don't forget to dispose the shape in the end so alright there we go we got the bouncing ball actually that's a little bit boring let's drop it from like 10 meters Yay! A little bit more action. Um, okay, so then I'll come up with something that we'll do in the next episode. <laughs> and until then, have a good day, thanks for watching, and yeah, see you then.